Let me start by thanking you so much for all the messages of support that you've sent since the referendum result. Not only did I have a pretty bruising time during the campaign, but it was obviously a pretty disappointing result for me and, and for my team here in Brussels. So thanks very much for the support that you've offered us. And my first message is to say that we are still here, as you can see, and we're very much still fighting for a greener future. In terms of domestic politics, I find it somewhat ironic that after a campaign that was fought on the question of sovereignty, the question of who rules our country, what we've discovered is that the answer is a tiny number of people in the Tory party. The Brexit team that's being set up to decide what happens in the negotiations is actually not at present accountable to Parliament in any way and it's being led by Oliver Letwin, an old Etonian pal of David Cameron, no doubt somebody he considers a safe pair of hands. But this is completely inappropriate in these discussions that are so important for our future. We must keep Theresa May to her promise of setting up a proper Brexit department with full parliamentary scrutiny and we also need to include European politicians in that scrutiny because one of the things we learned during the campaign was how little understanding there was of the way the European Union works, even amongst some of our senior politicians. It's vitally important that we have public and parliamentary scrutiny of the Brexit process because many of the laws that have ruled our lives for the past 40 years will be changed. They're all up for grabs now during this process. And they've been passed by governments of all different political complexions, most of them to the left of this current government. We also need to keep up the pressure for an autumn general election. The Brexit vote says absolutely nothing about what the future of our country outside the EU should look like. And since the Tories' election manifesto did not contain any information about this, we urgently need a full and a fully public debate and a vote to decide what we want our future to look like. To reject this suggestion is also to make a mockery of the debate about sovereignty we've just been through. In little more than a year, the Conservatives have created mayhem and division in our country. Not expecting to win the election last year, they promised a referendum they never meant to follow through on. They rushed this through and did nothing to ensure the debate was fair and balanced. And now those who played the country like a game of cards have run away, leaving us to sort out the mess. But we can rise to the challenge. We need to demand a general election and make that general election a debate about the future of Britain. And we need to capitalise on the renewed sense of political engagement the referendum has fostered and introduce proportional representation for elections to make sure that from this point forward, all votes count.